Hello and welcome to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel. In today's episode, Wolseley 1500. Hello and welcome back. Now, if you're new to Quartz Light, we're a car brochure channel. Here on YouTube, looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that. And today is one of those we're actually going to the 50s for today's brochure but if you're interested in all that you're interested in memories please consider subscribing it is all completely free so yes we're going back to 1958 in fact for the Wolseley 1500 so let's throw that on the board now and here is today's brochure and what a lovely one for the time like I say this is from 1958 and look at the condition really rather nice now for quarter light, I always say 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s because that's the majority of my brochures. But we do sometimes go to the 50s. Now, 70s and 80s, probably most of my brochures are 70s and 80s. A lesser amount of the 90s and a lesser amount again of the 60s and then 50s. I probably only got like a handful. So this is one of them, the Wolseley 1500. Not a car I remember in any form whatsoever i don't remember it growing up as being an older car i don't remember them as being older and seeing too many of them to be honest with you so it's not one that was really on my radar but i'm doing it today because i quite like it and it's a great nice brochure today so if anyone can fill me in if anyone remembers these or even own one at one time let me know how you got on with them that is always really interesting and for those people who listen to my 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, I hope you don't mind me going back a little bit further today. What a fabulous colour scheme for a start of on this particular example. Two-tone green, all of the chrome. Wasn't a huge car by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly a nice one. I always think Wolseley is a little bit, a little bit more upmarket from your Austins and your Morrises, I always seem to feel. Uh, let's just zoom in a little bit further. Look at that lovely mascot on the hood, the W, kind of like at speed for Wolseley. And then we've got the more familiar uh, Wolseley badge on the grill there. I know a lot of Wolseleys, they actually lit up. I'm not sure if this is one of those examples. Let's just assume it does light up, but certainly let me know either way but overall beautiful styling and kind of like the badge kind of like design kind of like continues even when we go down the side on the wing there so lovely little touches just showing you that it's a a little bit more up market from the norm and even when i just put the camera up a little bit it's even got these sort of matching green seats in there how wonderful is that now there's a couple of little cords on this brochure first one rather unusually is actually on the front cover publication number h and e 5874 and then on the back page we do have some numbers at the end there the 858 is referring to august 1958 but we'll come back to this back page later on it's got all these specifications sorry about my camera just making a loud clicking noise but all the specifications so we'll come to that right at the end of the brochure so let's move back to the front cover bottom of the front cover here is obviously the name the Wolseley 1500 1500 written out and somehow looks all the better for actually writing 1500 rather than just doing it in numbers doesn't it and extremely fancy text all very approved but let's open the brochure up and see what's inside so when we open the first page, we're introduced with a, a beautiful dashboard, very, very elegant, and you can sort of see straight away it's looking quite a bit more upmarket to uh, what we would expect, and then some little features on this side. But you'll also notice it's wider than what a normal brochure is, and regulars to the channel will actually know that um, 50s and 60s brochures tend to open up into a brochure a sort of poster style brochure is what i'm trying to say so i think people that would be used to that who have watched the channel but for those who don't usually 50s and 60s brochures a rarely contain any sort of real image everything is drawn which i really like 
and also rather than a conventional brochure most of them open into a poster style although not exclusively we have some more regular brochures at this time as well but this seems to be uh, the more approved way at this time anyway back to the episode we'll read some of this text we'll probably admire this beautiful dashboard for a little bit and then we'll move to the next page and then we'll open the brochure up properly so he starts by saying true Wolseley craftsmanship and apologies the text is a little bit smaller than you would normally find on a brochure actually um, but I will read it out. It tells us, here is a car with the emphasis on worth, the luxury of polished walnuts, the comfort of genuine leather, the distinctive, distinguished styling with a hint of flamboyance. Benefits that only traditional Wolseley craftsmanship and experience can provide. Here is a car that is soundly engineered throughout with the power, performance and reliability to carry you long or short distances, quickly, easily and economically. It is the more sensational, rewarding Wolseley yet. So we move the camera down and don't worry we are going to go back to that dash but the small print at the bottom tells us the fascia panel is of beautifully grained walnut veneer. Provision is made for fitting a HMV car radio at extra cost. I imagine a car radio at this time would be less common, but it's telling you you can do, and I guess this is probably the area, I'm assuming, where the radio would be, and I'm assuming, or maybe I'm wrong, I'm assuming this is some kind of speaker here, so it's kind of like the provision is already there. In some ways I wish this was an actual photograph of the inside because it looks fantastic. I'm sure the real thing looks even better. Love the steering wheel design uh, with the Wolseley badge in the centre there. And all that walnut veneer. So much nicer than what, you know, the wood or attempted to put wood in cars in the 70s and 80s, isn't it? It's just absolutely beautiful. Gauges... Um, more in the center rather than directly in front of the driver you can see and then to one side we've got this little glove box and i'm assuming this is probably some kind of like fan control a max min but right over that side it would be a little bit of a stretch really in the 50s ergonomic design wasn't really a thing they just kind of like put it where it looked best or indeed where it just fitted on the dashboard anyway moving on so moving on to the far right of the brochure now it tells us beautifully styled realistically priced brilliantly engineered this superb Wolseley 1500 it is a compact car with high performance the 1500cc OHV engine provides a high power to weight ratio giving overdrive performance on a normal though high top gear for long distance tireless motoring speed inferred nears that in top overtaking is swift and sure brakes are large and powerful torsion bar front suspension allied to good steering geometry gives rock steady road holding and cornering it then goes on to tell us all interior appointments are tastefully styled to tone with the gay, hard-wearing exterior colours. This Wolseley is built for today's motoring conditions. For those who want all the advantage of Wolseley quality and craftsmanship at a favourable price. Prove it for yourself. And it's got some little drawings with the features on there. So first of all, flashing indicators. Safety styling includes the deep sunk centre steering wheel. Fingertip switch operates the flashing direction indicators. Handbrake. Logically placed handbrake operates independently. Locks securely. Holds the car firmly on the steepest gradient. Gear lever. Gear change lever is mounted centrally on the floor. Easy and positive to use. Clutches hydraulically actuated. And then as I just attempt to move the camera back a little bit, I'm going to open the brochure out. Um, so first of all, it kind of opens at the top there and then it kind of like drops down for the full page. 
Um, I think where I'm going to start, I don't know if this is going to be a logical decision or not, um, but I think I'll start at the bottom here and then we'll work down the actual main inside brochure itself. Sometimes hard to work out where we're going to start, but let's start here. It's got a nice side image, it's got a nice open door with more nice wood. So we'll start here and then we'll move to the top there. So it's going to continue the theme showing some of the features of the car itself saying these features mean added comfort and eye appeal and at the bottom plus safety and reliability. Let's start with this open door let's see what it's telling us about it. So it tells us wide opening forward hinged doors give easy access, door locks have fixed handles and push button lock release, all doors are lockable from the inside and both front doors from the outside. Nicest thing though of course is the drawings showing that uh, wood on there which is very beautiful. Of course we've got opening quarter lights that's very uh, approved of course for the channel. Moving along the main image just kind of like showing you really that you don't have to have it in two colours. You can have it in a very conservative I guess black which probably fitted in quite well for the time if you didn't want your car to show it's too showy of course and then we've got these sort of white wheels with hubcaps the one thing with um these 50s and 60s brushes because they're all drawn i think there was a little bit of sort of artist interpretation of what they wanted the car to look like rather than it, what it actually looks like um, you can see the wheels pretty much touching the arches on there to try and give it that sort of like low sleek look which obviously the car wouldn't have been exactly like that and they kind of like often lowered the uh, roof line down to make it even sleeker so although the drawings are absolutely wonderful just bear that in mind when you look at some of these images they're not they haven't made a mistake is what i'm saying they've tried to make it sleeker than what it really was i think uh, moving along Trying to appeal to the Hubnut crowd here. Twin wipers sweep a wide arc of the windshield and windshield washing equipment is available as an optional extra. Okay, there you go. You got wipers, but if you wanted to wash the screen, that was an optional extras, I guess, in the 50s, <laughs> rather unusually. Uh, moving down, it then talks about the front suspension. Front suspension by torsion bars has been scientifically balanced with the rear suspension to work harmoniously under all road conditions and if we just move the camera down we get a lot nice little drawing of that okay let's just move the camera out again okay so let's make some kind of attempt to make sense of this brochure so like i say it folds down and if we lift the whole thing up we can see how long the brochure becomes but obviously I'm going to have to do some adjustments for the camera, so let me just do that. Like so, I guess. So, like I say, now, if you put my hand in there, you can see how big that brochure has now become. But some lovely images. Again, we've got a really nice two-tone example, this time in some shade of red and white or ivory on there. I like how they've designed it with the red roof and the red lower. It looks really quite smart. At the bottom here, of course, we've got some sort of inside and more sort of like features of the car. And at the top, we're looking at the engine by the looks of it. So I'll adjust the camera so we're looking at this top half and then we'll move down the brochure logically. So the text right at the top of the brochure says high cruising speed at low engine revolutions plus exceptional acceleration. So it starts with this really brilliant drawing of the engine and gearbox on there. That is fantastic. You see all the little bits, you know, the starter on there, etc, etc. But I think that's really nicely drawn. Also gives you sort of like a, a power curve, if you can believe that, for these engines. There we go. Brake, horse power um, versus engine RPM. Showing torque and BHP rather interesting trying to show you this is going to give you exceptional acceleration which is almost amusing today of course but um, that's what they're trying to show you moving down the text is showing the bmc one and a half liter ohv engine powers the wolseley 1500 power is high and with the very favorable power to weight ratio the engine is always under stressed it is 
corresponding extremely economical on fuel and maintenance is reduced to a minimum. We got a little bit of a image of one of the pedals with a lady in high heels, which I'm not sure is physically advisable, but there it is. Uh, foot controls, which can be operated by moderate pressure, are among the characteristics making the 1500 a delightful car for the lady driver. The Borg and Burke single plate dry clutch has hydraulic actuation. Synchromesh engaged is provided on second, third and top gear, so kind of like a crash gearbox on first. Um, always funny these 15, these are uh, 1500s I was going to say. Always funny these uh, 1950s brochures really when they refer to what is a lady's car, what is a gentleman's car. A lady's car was on you. You know, the pedal's so light, even a lady can press them. They're a bit condescending, so hopefully that doesn't offend anyone, but that's just a sign of the times, I guess. There is more text at the side here, so we'll just go through that. So it tells us the exceptional visibility of a driver and passengers is achieved by a wide, curved, one-piece windshield, a large, curved rear window and narrow pillars, a deep, sunk centre safety-type steering wheel, and sponge rubber protection rails at the top and underneath the fascia are safety features which will be appreciated by the experienced motorist. It goes on to tell us the mono construction body providing as it does the greatest possible accommodation and interior width with the maximum strength makes a further contribution to the safety of the occupants. Provision is made for the small items which accumulate on the shopping expedition by a parcel tray behind the back seat squab. The interior roof lamp is fitted with an independent switch, also automatic switches which are operated by the opening of the front doors. Just zoom out again and then move down. We are moving down the brochure now to this lower section which is actually going to be taken completely up by this one image of the Wolseley 1500 telling us it's beautifully styled, realistically priced and in what would have been a very unusual colour for its day I think more commonly would be like a green or like we saw earlier just a, a, a full black colour but this is a very unusual in this red it must look very striking in uh, the 50s I don't know how well any of these colours or you know, obviously would have had to pay more for a two-tone colour, but I'm not sure how many were sold of each colour, of course. I just think it's an actual really beautiful colour in no matter what colour you get it in, to be honest with you. But I particularly like the two tones, I think they're the ones I would have picked for sure. At the bottom, quite simply saying again, the Wolseley 1500 complements your good taste. And then moving to the bottom of this huge page, now it tells us a compact high performance car with the traditional Wolseley luxury. It's very much continuation of that theme and you can see it's that theme as well. It's quite a small car, but a luxurious small car. You always think like when they talked about luxury small cars in like the 90s and the 2000s making out that was a new thing. Well, no, it wasn't. You can get luxurious small cars even in the 50s nice look at the interior i think we'll start on and then we'll work our way along the brochure so at the beginning of the brochure we saw that that green example that two-tone green example had a green interior and this looks like possibly it's hard to make out really isn't it because it looks blue on the inside and it's black on the outside maybe a two-tone black and blue i'm not sure what colour this is supposed to be but you can see the interior is a very unusual I'm not going to say orange but it's certainly a very unusual sort of like tan and like a beige or white it's a very unusual colours uh, being used there for sure but again demonstrating all the wood in there as well moving along now at the centre here it's going to start talking about some of the features again so there is a wide selection of interior upholstery schemes to choose from key to match the brilliant exterior paint colour. Due tone colour schemes are available at extra cost 
ask your dealer for colour options available. The rear seat armrests fixed to the rear doors also serve as door pulls. Loop tile door pulls are fitted to the front doors and then these little features. Rear suspension, rear leaf springs are long and flexible. Hydraulic shock absorbers on all wheels give a uniform ride smoothness no matter how rough the road. Rear lights. Rear light treatment includes separate flashing direction indicators, reflectors and tail stop lights in a combination unit. Indicators are amber coloured for definite safety. Braking systems or hydraulic brakes are large, powerful and smooth in operation. They are of larger size on the front wheels where they have more work to do. And then finally, the final bit of text on this huge area that we've opened up, the large luggage boot has a capacity of 11 cubic feet. The lid lifts easily and is retained in the raised position by an automatic lid stay. The spur wheel is stored in a separate housing beneath the boot flooring and is easily accessible without the necessity of disturbing the contents of the boot. And there is a little, nice little drawing to demonstrate that. I always like the idea actually having the spur wheel in this centre car compartment rather than having to lift like the carpet up to get to the, to the spur wheel. You know, if your boot's full, you can still get at that spur wheel. So, you know, some ways, some ways that they are the better, aren't they? Anyway, let's move on from this. And I think we're up to the specifications now. So there we go. I've saved you the pain of watching me trying to fold all that back up again. Specifications. Unusual the 50s and 60s specifications. They go into you know, fine detail in some areas. So I don't think I'll read the entire thing. But I'll certainly cast the camera over the entire thing. We'll probably just pick some key points to talk about as we go through. But let's start up here. Usually starts with the engine. I think this does as well. So here we go, some details about the engine. So it's a four cylinder engine, of course, 1489cc, uh, developing 50 brake horsepower at 4200 RPM, uh, free bearing crankshaft, um, renewable element external full floor oil filter, which is quite common for the time. And then moving down, we start talking about the cooling system, the ignition, and then the carburetor, which is an SU automatic semi downdraft carburetor uh, fed from rear tank by rear mounted SU electric fuel pump. So then the transmission, four speed gearbox with synchro mesh on second, third, and top. So no synchro mesh on first, but that wasn't unusual in the 50s and 60s, uh, to be honest with you. Moving down, it starts talking about the brakes. So the brakes, it quite simply says Lockheed Hydraulic, fully compensating brakes on all four wheels. Simple shoe adjustment, which simultaneously adjusts the handbrake. So a very simple uh, brake unit. Then it starts talking about the body. Um, Full width bumpers, front and rear, deep well sprung upholstery with foam rubber seat cushions, overlays on spring cases, leather upholstery in due tone colour scheme with leather cloth on non wearing parts, walnut veneer fascia with door cappings, two glove boxes in fascia with lids, wide one piece curved windshield and large curved rear window, log, large luggage boot with automatic lid stay, making it quite a high spec vehicle really. So suspension, we kind of like touched on that a little bit, but you know, if you do want to read it all, certainly you can do. I'm just going to move the uh, camera down now. It then gives you information about the wheels and the tyres using Dunlop tubeless tyres, uh, steering, rack and pinion steering. Um, it starts talking about the left hand drive not available in the UK, which would be quite obvious. Moving down to the electrical equipment, so high output dynamo well, with compensating voltage control 12 volts on this particular model. We've got double dipping headlamps with pre focused bulbs. 
ignition warning light and headlamp main beam warning light in speedometer dial foot dipping switch separate side lights twin stop and tail lights incorporating reflectors number plate lamp non glare instrument lighting dual arm self parking windshield wiper we also got a twin wind tone electric horns flashing direction indicators roof lamp with independent and automatic switches operated by the front doors illuminated name badge okay so i think that answers one of the questions that little wolseley badge on the front looks like it was illuminated instruments speedometer with trip and total distance recorders fuel gauge oil pressure gauge engine temperature control uh, control panel panel light switch windshield wiper switch two position lamp switch ignition switch mixture control and starter switch ventilation winding windows to all doors hinged ventilation panels to front doors and then we've got the general equipment so it tells us we get safety glass all round ashtray in each front door with central ashtray for rear compartments anti-glare driving mirror door locks with fixed handles and push button lock release all doors lockable from inside both front doors lockable from the outside pile carpets armrests on rear doors also act as door pulls loop type door pulls on front doors bucket seats with instant adjustment two sun visors special jack with side jacking points provision for fitting the hmv car radio and then the optional equipment so we get a windshield washer as an option remember that doesn't come as standard we get that radio as an option we also get a three and a half kilowatt heater which could be optioned not unusual at that time though surprising many cars didn't come standard with a heater and then of course we got those two color uh, color schemes and then it actually tells you the colors unfortunately there isn't a color scheme which is strange but they've kind of like decided well it isn't strange actually it's quite normal in the 50s to have it all written out like this so colors you can have it as black with either red or mottled grey upholstery and red carpet or green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet or tan and cream upholstery and brown carpet off white wheels so just by picking black you've got all those different interior options to make your car very customizable at this time we can also get Yukon grey we have a red and mottled grey upholstery and red carpet or green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet off-white wheels Alhambra green we have a green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet or tan and cream upholstery and brown carpet island green wheels oh you get green wheels with that one you can also have island green we have a green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet or tan and cream upholstery with brown carpet island green wheels you can have champagne with red and mottled grey upholstery and red carpet with champagne wheels we could have maroon with either red and mottled grey upholstery and red carpet or tan and cream upholstery and brown carpet champagne wheels and it goes back to a yukon grey and off-white okay so this is going to be your uh, uh, two color options then isn't it so uh, yukon grey with off-right white with either red and mottled grey upholstery and red carpet or green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet off white wheels black and island green with a green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet or tan and cream upholstery and brown carpet island green wheels we could have island green and off white with a green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet or tan and cream upholstery and brown carpet off white wheels yukon grey again this time with island green with green and mottled grey upholstery and green carpet island green wheels alhambra green and island green we have a green or mottled grey upholstery and green carpet or tan and cream upholstery and brown carpet 
island green wheels and then finally we've got maroon and champagne with either red and mottled grey upholstery and red carpet or tan and cream upholstery with brown carpet champagne wheels what a choice I think the nice thing about buying these brand new cars is really you could specify it really exactly how you wanted it including different choices of your upholstery that's such a huge difference isn't it from today's cars and maybe having a couple of different choices of grey and maybe a white and a black if you're lucky you get a red no choice whatever colour you get is whatever colour that matches with the interior but here almost feels like you're getting sort of like a one-off um, custom made vehicle which is really nice and I do like this time for that and then in the centre this is just where your dimensions are which was really too difficult really to talk on camera but I just wanted to throw you on there just to just to show you that the dimensions are in this brochure as well it also says there's a separate price list very sadly I don't have that separate price list at the bottom here some of the addresses so Wolseley Motors Limited Cowley Oxford Overseas Business Newfield Exports Limited Cowley Oxford England and then like we looked at at the start printed in England by Newfield Press Limited Cowley Oxford and the codes and that date code on there and then you lovely little the British Motor Corporation Limited BMC which looks fantastic doesn't it I have got one more thing for you I have this rather nice little 1958 review from the Daily Mail for the Wolseley 1500 so let's just have a look at that so it says here Wolseley 1500 it tells us the price rather nicely 796 pounds and seven some of the writing is a little bit unusual in the 50s it says lightweight moderate frontal and one of the milder degrees of tune for the b series bmc engine there you have an infallible recipe for economy in a full-size family four seat saloon so even though it's a small car it is telling us it's a full-size vehicle actually um, how well it works in practice is shown by the 1500s petrol consumption figure of 35 mpg under medium to hard driving conditions improving to over 40 to the gallon when conscious care is exercised with the throttle pedal total width across the separate front seats including the central um, no man's land is 40 inches compared with 39 inches between wheel arches at the rear widening to 50 inches at foot level seat to roof measurements front and back retrospectively are 38 and 34 inches it goes on tells the spring spoke steering wheel is dished there is ample fore and aft adjustment for the front seats and two glove lockers and twin sun visors are provided the 1500's modest weight well under 1900 weight dry is reflected in liveliness as well as fuel economy witness its acceleration from 0 to 60 in just over 24 seconds so interestingly the main thing they're really considering here in the 50s for this car is fuel consumption which it says is quite good it does give us some technical data there telling us what we've already read about the fuel consumption also telling us a top speed of 79.2 miles per hour and then about the dimensions etc and the gear ratios unusually so even the newspaper it's kind of like going to detail about the gear ratios funny as it out of times of change it's not really telling you how the vehicle drives at all you know it's just telling you what it is really but there you go i thought we'd nice to include that little review i hope you didn't mind me adding that to the brochure but thank you so much for watching today if you do remember these cars please jot in the comments and certainly if you ever owned one please do jot that in interesting to know how you got on with it i think the standout feature for me is that beautiful interior and of course the colors and all the different options you get different interiors depending on the color and even interior choices which is quite amazing isn't it really it's really a nice uh, small package or full-size vehicle depending how you viewed it at the time i guess but thank you so much for watching today um we'll end as we always do by saying 
thing please do consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed it is completely free it won't cost you a penny for however long you're subscribed for which i would say just keep yourself subscribed on there and keeps you in touch with all the progress on the channel all this new information that we keep adding on there you can actually become a member if you want to bit of a warning though there isn't too much extra you get for being a member to be honest with you but it does highlight you when you make a comment so i can and i think it possibly puts you to the top as well and i certainly will always comment and reply to anything you put on there and of course if you ever do a, a recommendation i will always try and get that brochure to um, do you a little review if you're a member as well but overall thank you for becoming a member i know we're not giving you too much at, at the moment so i know you are really trying to help support the channel because we do a lot of content so i appreciate you very very much for doing that but anyway we'll end by saying thank you for everyone who's watched to this point today we appreciate that very much as well hope you're having a good day please do take care and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye.